Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerik. Today we're going to be talking about advanced features in the RAD time bar. Specifically, we'll be looking at features that allow you to control what time period is displayed, what time period is visible, what time period is selected. Let's open up Visual Studio and create a new application. We'll call the new project RAD TB Features. Let's say OK and say yes to it being a Silverlight 5 application. And when the configuration widget comes up, we'll choose data visualization. Now this is going to be very much like the previous video in that we will create our RAD time bar programmatically against a sparkline, an area sparkline, which will have the data that we'll be displaying. So you see uh, online 20 RAD sparkline equal new RAD area sparkline. The for loop is slightly different. This comes out of the documentation and is an interesting way to do it. It's rather than arbitrary values, we're counting through the number of days in 100 days from today. It's very much the same effect, but it may give you a little bit more semantic context for what you're showing. What we want to focus on, however, is the time bar itself. Let's get the time bar created so first of all we instantiate a new time bar object we'll call that new object time bar and the very first thing that we want to do is call begin init and then we'll set up a little bit of housekeeping with the width and height of the time bar now comes the part that we are particularly interested in which is setting the time span that the time bar is going to cover. The overall time span is the period. We set the period start to the earliest date that we're going to display in the time bar, in this case, January 1st of 2010. And then we set time bar period end for the last date we're going to display. Now, this date is not necessarily going to be shown all at once, but this is the entire span of dates that the control will show. So we'll set that to 1231 of 2013. That is a full two years. We need to add intervals to be able to display our time period. And so we're going to choose to add months, weeks, and days as our intervals. Then we close off the initialization. We set the time bar's contents to our spark line, and we set the contents of this page to the time bar itself. Run the application, and you can see that we have the entire time span shown all at once. And if you look at the control bar on the bottom, it's fully expanded. We can contract that, and when we do that, we begin to get a little bit more detail as to months or even weeks within the months. But our initial display was that everything was visible all at once for the entire two-year period that we're covering. We can fix that. Let's go back to the code. And all we need to do now is to set another attribute of the time bar, which is the visible period start. That says this is the earliest part that I want immediately visible when the application begins. So we're going to put in a date that is within our overall period, but this will be the part that's visible. We're going to start our visibility on February 14th of 2011. Similarly, the visible period end is going to tell us the date for the end of what's visible when we first start the application. Now understand the relationship between the visible and the full period. The visible could be the entire period or a subset of that period, depending on how large a subset will depend on how large that cursor is, indicating how much of the overall period we're looking at. We're going to run from February 14th of 11 to June 1st of 12, a sizable subset, but not the complete period that we are capable of displaying. And so you see that cursor is now not taking up the entire bottom, but it's taking up about a third. And we can slide it back and forth within the entire period, but the initial visible period was defined by the properties we set, which effectively set the width of this cursor, which we can expand and contract. At the moment, no 
period was selected, but we can create a selected period, and we saw this in the other videos. We're going to focus a little more tightly now. What we're saying is that we want our selection to start, and here it's not necessary to make your selection be within the visible period, although certainly within the overall period, but we'll choose to make it a set of dates that are within the visible period so that we'll see the selection as soon as it opens up. We're going to say start on July 4th of 2011 and then we'll set selection end to end on August 5th of 2011. So just over a month. Let's run the application and we should see within the visible period a selected period. And there we have our selected period running from July 4th to August 5th. So virtually the entire month of July and just a little bit for the beginning of August. As we zero in on the weeks, our selection becomes more detailed but does not change the dates of the selection. We can do that by moving the selection itself, however, or we can expand or contract that selection. Another option we can set is is snap to interval enabled. If we set that to true, we are asking the selection to set itself so that it snaps to one of the intervals we've defined, in this case day, week, or month. Let's go over to the selection. As we expand the selection, you can see those snap lines, and when we release it will snap to a snap line. If we decrease, we see the snap lines again, and it's out to the nearest snap line. I hope you've seen how easy it is to work with these advanced features of the RAD time bar. For Telerik, this is Jesse Liberty. Thank you very much, and I look forward to talking with you again very soon.